Hi guys, and welcome to the Lifestyle Design Secrets podcast, where we talk about fitness, nutrition, mindset, and a whole lot more. Thank you for everyone who's listened to all our episodes so far and taken the time to leave a review. If you do enjoy this episode and want the free content to keep on coming, please do take two seconds to leave us a five-star review. Thanks again. Now let's dive in. Okay, do you still get nervous like recording podcasts and stuff? Yes, and it really depends often who I'm talking to and what it's yeah. about, like whether it's a topic I feel comfortable talking about. If it's something that I'm feeling so kind of pushing my boundaries, then I'll get super nervous. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, like with everything, I guess. Yeah. But yeah. So but um, I'm feeling relaxed doesn't... today. You are good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We like that. I love that we're accidentally matching too. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> workout gear. Can't be yeah. Um <laughs> So for anyone who doesn't know, Kate Ivy runs Dedicate, which is an incredible um, fitness app. And there's also, you've got a website with a blog. Um, and I've just drawn some words from your website, Kate. So what you guys focus on is a balanced and holistic approach to health and fitness, everyday life family and fun so yes. you help people get fit feel great and build a long-term sustainable lifestyle which I think is gold yes it, there's no point in, in it being any other way no it's <laughs> not life isn't a, a quick fix to get you to where you want to be is it is no exactly it's not just eight weeks of exercising you know what's the point Need yeah. to make it permanent. Yeah, and I'm um, I'm really intrigued to get into that. But before we do, um, as a we do starter on this podcast, saucy starter meaty main course, and then a takeaway dessert for everyone. So as a starter, Kate, because I personally probably end up starting my business because it's what I wish I'd known, like yeah. maybe like a decade ago. Like, I wish I'd know more about fitness and nutrition and mindset. And that just wasn't there for me in my 20s. Like, we had magazines with models that were probably all photoshopped. Yeah. And I think I mentioned last week, like, I was grew up in London in the era of, like, Kate Moss. Mm-hmm. Nothing tastes as good as skinny feels. Nothing to do with strength. Nothing yeah, to do exactly. with any of that kind of stuff. So what brought you to start? dedicate yeah really similar so um I had periods throughout my life where I was like weight obsessed on on the scales every day um was actually underweight sorry my husband's just coming in this is the joys of um (laughs) working from home I'm just recording a podcast yeah awesome um yeah so (laughs) And my I, husband was just like, do you want the dog in here or not? And I was like, no, <laughs> just, just in case he starts going nuts and barking. <laughs> yeah. No, um, yeah, and so I had periods where I was really weight obsessed and I was super fit and I was like, do you remember the Special K diet? We have Special K on their boxes oh. encouraged people to have Special K for breakfast and lunch. So I do that I'm here so and there. I'm so glad you brought this up because I did exactly <laughs> that. Yeah. And so many people did it. Yeah, so many. Um, Just so like I, beige carbs for breakfast and lunch. And yeah, and the thing is, no it, was, like shit. Um, it kind of hit the spot, though, because it was so kind of sh- fake sh- sugary that you'd get yeah. a hit and buzz from it. Um, you feel really full. Like, I can't remember if I felt full, yeah, for the hour. <laughs> but, yeah, it definitely, you were like, I look forward to it anyway. I was like, oh, yay, special cake. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that, and... Um, you know, was so focused on the scales and would be really stressed over tiny, tiny changes. Um, like things like get a di- get diarrhea and then the scales go down and you're stoked. Like, you're like seriously yeah. crazy stuff. And yeah. um, then I'd have per- I had periods in my life as well where I was the complete opposite. It was this 100% all in or all out attitude. That is part of who I am. But when applied to health and fitness combined with what you're talking about with the media and all the pressures 
um, it was just catastrophic. So I was either like skinny, we would call skinny and exercising yep. a lot and completely almost more self-conscious than when I wasn't looking after myself. Well, I wasn't actually looking after myself then, but you, you know what I mean? And then the opposite yeah. was like changes like university, traveling, um, pregnancy, where I wasn't worried about how I looked. So I just ate whatever and I can eat, trust me, I can eat like by yeah. tomorrow. So um, yeah, so, um, and I wasn't exercising and I just felt terrible. And for someone who has played sport all their lives and has exercises have always been a part of my self-identity. That was really tough. Um, so I put on lots of weight during my pregnancies because it didn't matter what I looked like. Um, was that the, like the, the uh, kind of turning point for you? Was that the first yes, time you really and, like gained weight? Um, gained massive amounts of weight, but I'd gained weight um, at the start of uni. So the first two years oh, of yeah. uni. Um, yeah, like, me both. Yeah, five to eight kgs sort of thing. And then... Um, yeah. It, when I went traveling as well, Heathrow injection. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and then after, oh, did you say you haven't heard that one? No, the Heathrow injection, but that's so I true. Call it, yeah. <laughs> and then, Especially um, coming from New Zealand, right, as well, because. Yeah, because there's so you, many of us right, go over you, there for our gap years and um, just and drink and party. And, yeah. Yeah. And yeah. Um, yeah, you're just, you're really not exercising or looking after yourself. You're just um, living week to week and focusing on what's happening in the weekends and just managing to pay your bills and have enough yeah. money to buy alcohol, et cetera. Um, yeah. And yeah, so after my third child, I, I knew it was going to be my last. And I just like had this, I literally had an aha moment where, it, you know, it obviously was from, a lot of learning throughout my life because I studied and worked in the health and fitness industry. It's always been a passion, but it literally was a moment where I realized for myself that I needed to stop focusing on the scales, stop worrying about what I looked like, like easier said than done, but I need yeah. to start fueling myself for energy. I had three young kids, one with special needs. I needed to look after myself. I needed to needed workouts that were short and effective um, so I started doing that and then I realized, um, you know, this healthy lifestyle approach, how valuable it was and how much it had helped me. And I realized there must be other women just like me who didn't have the knowledge or the background and didn't have this aha moment. And I could see women who were still like um, stressing themselves over what the scales were saying. Um, they were exercising for short periods of time, not knowing what to do. So I thought, why don't I create something to help them? That's absolutely epic. Yeah. And I bet that it's similar to me, like you, when you see people around you struggling with the same things and you're like, oh, yes. I feel like I've got the answers now. Or like yeah. people are constantly asking you about various different things like that or how you keep working out and keep your motivation up. Yeah. Because I think what is really interesting is you touched on it, but like what people do, like exercise for a short time and a long time, and you would agree, though, right, that life kind of moves in waves. Like, I've heard you talk about the fact that you still struggle, go through periods, waves of life, where you still struggle to get that motivation. Yeah, definitely. Exercise. Yeah. yeah people might probably look at you going, she's got it all down pat. She's yeah. got it all together. And I think that's a really good point we mentioned early on. Like, it's never ending, really, is it? Exactly. And I wish you that because... Um, you know, that's how I believe that we help people is by sharing those vulnerabilities so that they know when they have that thought inside their head, like, I really don't feel like this right now, that it's actually normal to not feel like it. Um, yeah. So then you go, oh, okay, it's normal to not feel like doing it. I'll do it anyway. Or, okay, life is really busy at the moment. I can't possibly exercise. And then you're seeing someone else who's like, hey, come on, guys, let's prioritize this because we will have more time, we will have more energy. And so you go, okay, maybe I can do it too. And realizing you're not alone, you know, in those day-to-day -day struggles. And for us, um, we encourage people to exercise because of the many benefits. It's not because we um, want to break records or we have to be super fit or that we go away on holiday and we have to exercise every day. 
it's like yeah we're exercising to make our lives better and that can look different for everybody for some people it might be exercising six days a week that's what make them makes them feel great especially those who um, have always been active but for some it might just be three workouts a week and it's just it's kind of like taking medicine or something it's something that you do um, that is an important part of you know, your overall health and wellness it doesn't necessarily have to be something that you become obsessed with or you have to go and enter an event or, you know, does that make sense? Absolutely. And I think, um, yeah, again, we sound quite similar. Like I used to be like super competitive, trying to do triathlons, trying to do all the cardio, like had to run a marathon, you know, tick that box. Um, I was going to the gym to F45, so quite intense, like five, sometimes six days a week. Yeah. Um, just because I felt like I had to. Um, yeah. And then it's, um, I got, most of you have the story, but I had really bad COVID and it like just stole my lungs. Really interesting. So oh, about yeah. this time last year. Um, yeah. And that was really tough mentally. Um, so on the last week, we talked about micro habits and just starting to, when you feel like you've been taken down, actually my best friend was pregnant at the same time. And she was like, it's what you're experiencing. It's exactly like what I'm experiencing. Yeah. Like no energy levels. Like you literally just cannot, cannot do things like you used to. Um, and I started with really small home workouts. And that was my way back. So I think that's what's amazing with what you do is like you dissolve all the kind of barriers mm. to health and, and fitness which yeah, I think exactly. is so important because yeah. what did I heard the other day that the heaviest weight you'll ever lift at the gym is the front door it's amazing yeah love that yeah like it's just it's getting up it's getting there yeah. it's getting your kit on and going mm. through the mental muscle mental battle um when especially when you first start a fitness journey and you don't enjoy it enough for the endorphins to be mm. fully kicking in yet because it's such yeah. a struggle and I think that's where people fall off is when they feel like it's too hard and they don't necessarily yet feel the benefits mm -hmm. but another point that you made that I love is like it's like the daily maintenance right to make your life feel better yeah and again I don't think that's what what a lot of people miss and I think it's hugely probably missing from the fitness industry is like I work out every morning because if I don't and that workout at the moment is walking up a hill yeah like it's not super intense it's like walking the dog and then walking up a hill sometimes with weights and doing a few push-ups or home workouts I mean it's not major but it's like it's like you walk a dog I always feel a bit like a puppy like if I try and sit down and do work Mm. like mental work before I've moved my body yeah it's like yeah like fidgety total mess like mm -hmm. the head's not in the game so I think like you said like the mental health benefit yeah there's just so many and um you know it especially gets more and more important as we age and yeah. um my biggest thing is I don't want women to be it's not my biggest thing but something that I think about often is women going into rest homes, for example, and they go along to these classes and they're just lifting one leg, lifting the other leg. And it's like, if you are active from when you are young, right the way through, you'll still be, you can still be lifting weights and walking in, you know, a yeah. much more agile way. Um, you know, just that, that quality of life that I think people forget. And as they age, they think I'm too old. Um, but it's actually, with you're too old not to. Like it's so yeah. important, and that's a mindset piece in itself, right? So we're yeah. so you like our lifespan is getting longer, or it was until it started getting shorter recently. Yeah. But our health span is like so bad. Like yeah. by the time we're sixty or eighty, we've had a couple hip replacements. Mm. So like we're really, really struggling, and I think mm. that's another thing I'm noticing a lot more is the um like helping people to consider exercising for your old lady body yeah rather than your body like tomorrow or next mm. week like exercise so that you can it's a lot calmer and a lot nicer way of thinking about it rather than just a sentence but 
yes yeah. it'll probably make you feel better today better tomorrow possibly look different in a few weeks but actually if you think of your like 85 year old self yeah and being able to play with your kids for a long time and your grandkids yeah exactly that's what I think people need to think about more yeah totally um and we encourage um, people to ditch the scales as well um some yeah. people can successfully have them and be okay but um there's just they're so one-dimensional and there's so much more to life than what this stupid metal thing says and I yeah. hate that um people can be going really well creating change creating positive healthy change and then can yeah. jump on scales and think they're failing just because the scales haven't moved or because they've gone up um yeah. and it can actually you know it stops people from continuing on their health journey um because of what they say when actually they're creating the habits which in the long run is going to actually provide sustained weight loss it may not be necessarily instant but if they are focusing on their long-term healthy lifestyle habits then it's going to be part of their lives so that's naturally going to happen and people valuing them, themselves based on what they weigh um and I had a bit of an epiphany the other day that I'm going to do a post about sometime soon I'm just waiting for the right time when it feels right and I've got the right words to say but I realized you've got to wait the right time so that your heart's in it because I reckon people can tell they, they can <laughs> they really can um I realized that not all the time but sometimes I am body checking like one of the first things I do when I get up in the morning not when I get up early it's kind of like when I have my shower so um and I realized yeah. that that's just as negative as jumping on scales like I'm basing how I feel about myself that day from checking. um so that is something I want to sort of raise awareness of because it's kind of like that next layer it's like yeah so you, first we you want just to help it away the mic um, okay. Oh, sorry. So you're basing, no, that's right. So you're basing your how you feel that day on kind of how you look. Yeah, exactly. By body checking and basing. Yeah. So yourself, we're starting your self worth off that day by how you look instead of um, the the other qualities that are so much more important. Yeah. Yeah. That's really interesting. So I reckon I do that too. Mm. And I. Without <laughs> like, even thinking about it. Yeah, exactly. Do it without thinking. You think I've ditched the scales. This is great, um, but actually, there are some other and layers. Actually, like looking in the mirror and like taking and prodding bits. It's yeah, like mentally. Mm. Exactly, and um, sometimes it may just be you might have a bit of bloat one morning, um, and then another morning you may not have eaten that much that night for some reason. And so, what you're basing yourself worth on really is. Um, just like the scales, it's not ac actually an accurate measure or positive measure of success. Yeah. And I think that's, I get some of my, I do get any clients who want to, I get them to track their weight, but also yeah. their centimetres. Yeah. Because I think it is crazy as well. I encourage women to, I have to ask you about what you guys find in nutrition at some stage, but um, yeah. the, most of my clients are eating like 35 to 45 teaspoons of sugar equivalent in carbohydrates every day yeah. without even realizing it like they're trying they're trying to eat healthy mm. and as soon as we pull that back down to like a healthier level and increase their protein because most people are really really under eating protein yeah um like all these changes start to happen but if they are moving they do start to tend to probably build a little bit more lean mass Mm, they exactly eat, so they might go up better, they yeah move yeah so the scales might stay the same even though the centimeters keep dropping yeah and that can be a really good education point so that they can yeah. learn um and see really what the scales do and that it's not all about just weight loss on the scales yeah and not not even yeah weight loss or centimeters like you said like oh exactly but it's the changes in mood and confidence yeah. Yeah, and energy levels. Yes. Yeah, energy yeah. levels is a huge one. Mm -hmm. I see. So, I love we've just been tangenting already. So on mm -hmm. to the main course. So you have been um, 
because this all got it all ties in so closely you've been doing a bit of work on your mindset this year yeah I have so yeah. um yeah it's something I have known that I've needed to do I've probably needed to have done it for a long time um, I think everybody should do it just like yeah. exercise that it's not just if you're having some challenges um yeah but for me it's been I think the catalyst the big thing for me is having a child with special needs and the impact on um of that um yeah and then also starting a business and being like throwing myself into social media where um you are valuing your self-worth based on likes and engagement um external validation external validation yeah so um really what pushed me to do it was because things were just really bubbling over um with challenges with my daughter and just emotions and all sorts of things and um so I've been working on that this year and what was so what some of the interesting stuff is um the pressure I put on myself to achieve that in one of and we caught I sort of caught myself even in one of the first few sessions I was saying right I want to have a in the in, in two years I want to have one of the strongest minds I want to have a really strong mind and again it's like everything is pressure performance yeah so um yeah I've been learning so much and what was really cool is I um really worked on my mind before my basketball game on um basketball final on Saturday and sport for me is kind of a bit of a metaphor for life um because I put a lot of pressure on myself when I'm playing basketball or golf or whatever it is um it applies to all other areas so I have been having a bit of a fear of failure putting too much pressure on myself um and I have realized that a lot of that is because I am um sort of like like you say external validation and um so I was able to make a switch to doing it completely for me and for how good it feels and for the enjoyment and did a lot of visualization of the ball going in the hoop. And um, I was com- the goal was to be in the zone, you know, in sport when you're yeah. in the zone. And I was in the zone. And yeah, it's really cool to um, like it's positively influencing my life in lots of ways, but really cool to really see it so clearly in it. In like yeah. the kind of contained setting almost. Yeah, yeah. And the other times I'm noticing it is um, I used to have to fill every little moment with yeah. whether it was doing something for work or and I'd feel like if I wasn't doing something for work or doing something with little bites, small bites of time, then I was wasting that time and that I should be doing something or and or that I had challenges with my inner self that I just wanted to, you know, delete out by like keeping that. busy yep um yeah. and then so now I can just sit on the couch for 10 minutes I can just hang with the kids doing nothing um and feel good about that yeah that's yeah. okay again I think we're very similar because I struggle with exactly the same thing and I don't know if it's being a female entrepreneur or like always <laughs> taught to be like super independent or mm-hmm. like you're not being productive what are you doing mm. um and it's actually a horrible feeling because it is yeah. like you say like you actually miss out on elements of life like hanging mm. out with the kids mm. and feeling like yeah like with social media and stuff I think you mentioned on a reel the other day like just filling in 10 minutes going oh I should show up online I should yeah. oh, throw a story up or I'll make a reel I've got 10 minutes mm. it's like actually do you have to? Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah exactly. What's going to happen if you just take mm. this moment for yourself? And I think that's a huge... You and um, Sarah, again, were talking about it, and my coach, Paula, similarly, had to, like, peel back the layers of the onion. Yeah. Which yes, we talk about she that, was like, yeah. Yeah, like, why are you doing this? Mm. And it's like, you're doing it because you are so reliant on that external validation yeah and and almost like the um what I became a bit addicted to was like the highs like almost like endorphins coming from maybe someone emails in um with an opportunity or something like that so 
I found the starting a business played havoc with my emotions because, well, it brought them, it, it brought it out. So when something good happened, I was really high. When something not that good happened, I was really low. And yeah. it's like trying to find this sort of equilibrium, which I have a lot more now. Yeah. Have you read the book, I Don't Sweat the Small Stuff? No, but I have a big list of books I should read, and it sounds like one of them. Yeah. <laughs> That's, it's like a mini book. It's called mm -hmm. Don't Sweat the Small Stuff, and it's all small stuff. Um, and that's been really helpful for me. Awesome. That's exactly kind of like what you're talking about. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think I think more broadly as well, like you and me masking, not having downtime to actually know what's going on inside and just keeping busy and trying to be productive exactly. instead. I think a lot of women and people in general just rush through life, mm -hmm. like between kids and work. Yeah. And that's often where wellness falls by the wayside because mums mm. feel selfish. Yeah. For taking time to themselves. Mm -hmm. Um, and yeah, there's that narrative too where people talk about um doing it for your kids, but you want to go a step further yeah. and you know, you do it for you. Like you're someone's child as well, and um really you want to have the best life that you can and yeah, realizing that you're going to be more productive when you look after yourself and that things seem to fall into place. Like I've had a sort of a refocus with my health and fitness. Uh, it was prob it's probably nearly uh, over a year ago. Yeah. Um, and I thought previously I just got a bit wound up with business and I was still exercising three or four times a week. But remember, everyone has a different threshold of what yeah. being fit and strong feels to them. And um, I knew I needed and wanted to be fitter and stronger, but I wasn't able to see how to fit it in. And then I decided to prioritize it. And like, for example, I went for a run this morning. I didn't really have time, but I've prioritized it. And then the rest of yeah. the day just has to be filled in with, um, you know, everything else has to prioritize around it. And yep. you do get the important stuff done. I think that's really, really, really amazing what you just hit on. So you're like, I didn't really have time. And yeah. that's what everyone says when they can't mm. exercise or they can't prepare their meals or when mm. the conversation I always have is they're like, oh, I just go and grab a curry for lunch or a scone. Mm. And I'm like, well, it probably takes you 20 minutes to get in the car, drive to the cafe, wait in the queue. Yeah. And, then, and it's like what you actually want to happen becomes the priority and you make time for it. Mm -hmm. so I think totally. you're obviously maybe both of us now at the point where we know if we don't make time for that mm -hmm. exercise um the rest of the day isn't going to be as good as it could be yeah and also there's another way of looking at it too where it's like um instead of it being like I feel crap when I don't exercise like it's that you feel amazing when you do and we want to feel yeah. good don't we um, as something else yeah. that I've learned recently, um, you know, just from your own habits, is um, that not having time really is an excuse, even though people say, oh, it's an excuse, like, um, it feels so valid. Yeah. How I've got to the bottom of it genuinely isn't a valid, valid reason, because I haven't had time, haven't had time, I've got my quotation marks up, to yeah. exercise. Um and so I've done one of our 10 minute dedicate minis, which are really great for creating habits. Um, and yeah. then I get to the end of the 10 minutes and I realize I could actually do another 10 minutes that, and you know, I've. It's that, that reducing the barrier to start, isn't it? So you think you don't have time, but that's not the reason that your mind's, no. your mind's telling you you don't have time, but it's just trying to convince you not to exercise because you're he hesitating. So it thinks you're in trouble. So you exercise yeah. for 10 minutes. You get those mental health benefits. Your mind's a lot more clear, and you realize actually you do have time. Yeah, so you, you do add have on time another and team. you're enjoying it. Once yeah, you're into and it. it's not as bad as you thought it was going to be. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that's really so. I well, when when people sign up on my website, I've got like five lifestyle design secrets. I suggest yeah. people like kind of just just take a bit of a thought about. So first one is mindset, which we've kind of covered off, although I'm sure we might come back to it because it is so powerful. Um, yeah, I think, sorry, just on that, like, yeah. um, 
people have just, you know, getting therapy or mindset coaching is not just something you do if you're in crisis mode. It's basically our minds have come up with all these different strategies to keep us safe. And we kind of need to override a lot of them. And we've been pre-programmed based on what's happened around us and it's stopping us from living our life to the fullest. So why not get help and strategies so you can yeah. be just like exercise, be at your best. Yeah. And I completely agree with you. Like all the best sports people and business people in the world all have mm. coaches. Mm. And I was exactly the same as you, like probably just not naive, but a bit like, Oh, it sounds a bit woo woo. Like yeah, coach, 100% a bit cringe, American. Yeah. I was like, yeah, oh, people, I've been no. journaling and I'm like, I was like, yeah. what? Like, seriously, get a life. Like, that's just so idealistic. Yeah. Like, get over it. Or like, yeah. oh, I'm not going to have time to do that. Classic. Yeah. When am I going to have time to sit down and journal or like sit yeah. down and meditate? Um, yeah. And it's, that's why I like Sarah Dickey, who you're working with, and Paula, my coach's approach. Like, it's still very real but mm. yeah the benefits that you can get out of it I would say anyone worried about it which is what coaches also teach you as well let go of your ego yeah and give it a go mm-hmm. because all you're really worried about is I don't know really what I was worried about that it wouldn't work yeah like it's really yeah. interesting and yeah for me it was um who to go and see and oh yeah that was quite a barrier for me so yeah. um, having Sarah, and I think that's why I'm sort of, you know, it's working so well having Sarah um, helping dedicate members as it's breaking down yeah. that barrier. It's someone who, um, if they know me or they've done my workouts and stuff, then they can trust Sarah as well. And Sarah's um, grew up on element. a farm. Yeah. And she's, yeah. Um, she's, you know, she's one of us as well. Yeah. Mm. That's really, really cool. Um, so. On as well as mindset, which you touched on habits, which I'll get to as well. Um, environment is one factor. Yeah. So we've touched definitely. on a little bit like how when your environment changes, it can throw mm. you really off kilter. It might be like a new job when you yeah. move to a new place. Yeah. But I've experienced firsthand, like, um, yeah, what I love about what you do is like you do dissolve all those barriers. Mm. um to being able to do fitness on the go and in the past I I used you know Kayla it's yeah app? yeah yeah I was hooked on that for years just like yeah. when I was traveling or on holiday um, we need to get you on dedicate you'll absolutely love it I know I was I was having a bit of a look the other day and I was like oh I actually do need to get onto this because I want short workouts and I want to do a little bit of yoga as well Cool. Like yeah. we said about being one of those people who's like, I just can't bring myself to like go and do an yoga as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we have twenty minute, thirty happen. minute, and forty minute ones, so you can. Oh, and ten, and ten minutes too. Okay. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what I need. So, um, but yeah, so I think what I wanted to ask you about is, um, I often drive past rural homes, so I've come from central London. So mm-hmm. I can literally hop out the door, go for a run, even in the dark, because there's street lights. Um, I had some really amazing gyms, like uh, Virgin Active with all the Les Mills classes. I moved to Les, Les Mills and Takapuna in Auckland when I was there. And there's always been amazing kind of gyms and opportunities around me, or I could just run mm-hmm. or walk through the streets. And I drive past these beautiful rural properties in New Zealand, actually just with like dirt tracks and then a main highway. And I always think, God, I'd love to live somewhere like that. But actually, it would make me, I wouldn't go out and run on the highway. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And you're not near a gym. or you're not. So I quite often think about what a lot of your members must be going through. Yeah, yeah. And I think, did you find that? Have you always lived on a farm? Well, I grew up on a farm. And then I went to boarding school in Christchurch and then lived in Dunedin. So I've had both. Yeah. Um, so it's it's normal you know it's yeah you yeah. sort of don't know I do know the other way but I prefer to live rurally but um yeah 
to keep it basic on what what you're talking about farm tracks are great for running on yeah um or yeah. i drive to a running spot and go for a run oh yeah yeah um or yeah there's lots of tracks around um but then obviously we've got our workouts so we have workouts as well that you can do on the lawn so running workouts on the lawn oh, um, amazing just a huge huge variety yeah but um yeah there was a girl wrote in yesterday i could read it to you actually yeah do it an example of someone moving to the country and um obviously there's kayla it seems and all that kind of stuff but personally well not just personally we think ours is better um <laughs> i'm sure also, it is are you kind of example it actually is no no. Um, <laughs> no no but um when you you know it's part of being in a community of like-minded women as well which makes a difference and that's what yeah. the gyms have and that's sort of what what we create online as well um sorry i'll just really find because cool. that's one huge element let me know when you find it but of a gym yeah. culture and why so many people go or why people go to mm. classes because of the community element so recreating yeah. that online is pretty cool yeah exactly okay oh sorry i'll be able to find it as if you oh here we go <laughs> okay <laughs> Um, thank you so much, Kate, for creating such a great platform. I've recently moved to, I'll just keep it personal, so, you know, keep it yeah. anonymous. not personal. Um, I've just moved to something Valley. Loved the gym while living in town, and your platform now offers me everything I need. Find myself chatting to the videos as I'm working out. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, and a lot yeah. of people say it still feels like um, – the, you know, it feels like they've got a personal trainer with them. And yeah. then for rural people, um, rural and regional women, um, you want to feel seen and valued just like everyone else does. So that's yeah. a really important part of what we do and why we um, we have women in the cities doing our program and especially um, women with a more down-to-earth sort of approach to life. Um, yeah. But that's, you know, we all want to feel seen and valued and part of a community. And so that's why, um, why I guess ours is doing well, even though there are these massive ones out there like Kaylet scenes or whatever, you know? Yeah. And I think, um, yeah, I think that's huge. Like community is huge. And you say feeling seen. I think that's what I, I've moved from London to Auckland to Cromwell. Yeah. And it's really <laughs> interesting from like, you do feel like slightly, like you're hiding yeah not like you're hiding but like you say when you live rurally or regionally or like in a small town for me like you can't go and hang out with as many mates as you used to mm. or um you like you physically can't so yeah. you're completely right that kind of being seen and being part of a community is yeah. huge yeah and it can be a huge identity shift as well which is when you start exercising um my coach Paula was um and I've mentioned this a few times recently so I've incorporated a hell of a lot more mindset work into my programs mm -hmm. is a lot of people were doing so well for like the time we were working together and then they'd mm -hmm. be like oh you know a few weeks later not so much mm -hmm. and it's completely different now but their reasons like Paula pointed out it's they weren't ready to welcome being a fit and healthy person into their identity yeah and i i think the community really adds to that aspect yeah it's like yes. a form of accountability and, yes or and you see people that yeah. you can relate to and they feel like yeah. um you see yourself in others and yeah. you know what i was saying before about um people that are really active or play lots of sports in high school it's part of their identity often but for those that don't it's harder for them to make it a part to build it yeah, yeah to build it and really feel like it is part of them yeah mm. so from environment mm -hmm. next point that I work through with people is habit yes which you've already touched on and I think um just last week we talked about micro habits and the importance of just like putting your workout clothes out the night before like sounds yeah. so simple 
do you, for our listeners, have any habits that are most important to you? Oh, my personal habits? I thought I was going to give some advice on habits. But oh, yeah. Ha- <laughs> no, we go, we go deep first. I want to hear your habits and then, we'll, then we can talk about advice. Yep. So um, scheduling in my workouts at the start of the week. And sometimes oh, okay. it changes. Um, yeah. And then I can fit everything around it. So it's in my diary along with everything else. Um, yeah. I put out my clothes the night before, yes, at the door. Um, sometimes it's not exercise clothes because I might be exercising at like 9 a.m., but I get up at quarter past five, so I might just have clothes to quickly put on to go and do emails. Um, yeah. Getting up at quarter past five has been a big habit for me that I started the start of last year. Um, yeah. I started that because I was working in the evenings and um, just got sick of working in the evenings. That's no fun to anyone or the family. Exactly. And so it was probably about five years of working every evening, you know, from getting oh the kids goodness. in bed between 7 and 7.30 and working through till 8.30 till 9.30, depending on how much I needed to do. So um, I looked at that and was like, I'm going to, you know, get up early in the morning instead. Um, yeah. And every morning it's so hard to get up. But every morning it's my favourite part of day. Yes, I set an alarm. Yeah. Um, yeah. and I now go to bed it's a lot, a lot easier to go to bed earlier now my husband started going to bed earlier thank goodness because there was a really challenging time there where he wasn't and then yeah you'd this wake is, up when you to bed personal, but yeah like very similar like yeah. I guess you went like 8, 30, 9 o'clock and yeah. starts like oh I'll still have to watch telly yeah like, I know um, but that working in the evening without getting too mm. personal can't have been that much fun for your marriage. No, like, my husband did um, right. was against it at the start. Yeah. But then he accepted it and it just became normal and it was fine. Um, yeah. And I'd often, um, if I finished at 8.30 or 9, we'd watch a TV show or something. So I was going oh, to yeah. bed, you know, we'd watch something for an hour. Um, but yeah. he, was, he was like, oh, you're working again and stuff like that. And I just think like, how the fuck else do I get everything done? Honestly, like you can't yeah. have everything. Like <laughs> I think that's so good and so honest because I'm like again I've done really similar and like I started automatically waking up at five. I think it was like last summer. Maybe after being ill and early nights, but you're completely right as well that. What, what you've kind of done is shift like those hours of working late in the evening and watching Netflix or whatever, shifting them from like five to seven or eight in the morning instead mm. of that yeah. time at night. It's yeah. absolutely golden. And it's probably before what time do the kids are? You get the kids. Time? I have to wake them up at half past six. So I get like an hour yeah. and a quarter. Yeah. Hour and a quarter. Um, and like you said, it's your favorite time of day because mm. the rest of the world hasn't woken up yet. Yeah. Only once or twice in the, since I started in January last year. Now, I don't do it in the weekends, even though I know that um, that you're meant to get up at the same time each day to make it easier. But, yeah. again, that, that's a marriage thing. Like, if I got up at quarter past five yeah. every morning, you know. <laughs> um, <laughs> I completely agree, yeah. 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 So, um, oh, sorry, what was I going to say? Oh, I can't remember. Sorry, team. So how much? No, no, that's all right. I, um, do you reckon you get more productively done? In, uh, oh, sorry. Do? Yes, that is when I get the most done, for sure. And then sometimes, yeah. so that other times in the day, I'm like, you know, half the, you know, because you've got that pressure. I've only got an hour and a half, so I go, go, go. And I just yeah. remember what I wanted to say. I want to say nothing is perfect. So there is times that I'm like, oh, my God, is this really working? This getting up early, I'm exhausted. Um, you know, and the reality is I do too much even now for how many hours there is a day and how much energy I've got to give. That is just yeah. a reality that I've kind of accepted. So there are times when um you feel like it's not working because it's not because you're doing too much and it's exhausting. Yeah. Um so like it's not a um yeah, it's not a magical cure to all your time. It's not saving, a magic you know, pill. 
it's not the magic pill, but it's definitely the closest thing for me. Yeah, and it's because working. I get so much done in that short amount of time. <laughs> yeah. Do you feel kind of a bit freer for the rest of the day as well? Yeah, definitely. And if I do my exercise I I then, yeah, you feel freer. Like I might have cleared emails. I'd much rather clear emails at quarter past five in the morning than um, 7.30 at night. Although sometimes oh. um, I've like seen an email that I sent and I was like, like I sent an email recently to someone and I had all the wrong month. I, 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 was, I was talking about September, but it was actually away? August. Can yeah. Really? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, no, I love that. And so, yeah, scheduling workouts and being scheduling workouts, getting up early. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I was meditating. Um, yeah. And I'm not um at the moment, but I am because you know when I with this mindset stuff I'm working on, I have to a big goal for me is to you know my habit is that they say oh you could sorry not my habit but my um, no, on? my sort of pre-programmed thing is to oh yeah be like okay, I have to do that, and I put all this pressure on myself. So yeah, I'm trying to do one thing each day for my mind. So it might be journaling, um, it might be going for a 20 minute walk to get some um, sunlight first thing in the morning, which helps with sleep. Um, it might be grounding, yeah. so having my feet touching nature for 10 to 20 minutes. Um, yeah. just something each day and I want to bring back meditation as part of that and also um, stretching which I'm actually going to include in that just to get that habit going again because I find I'm quite mindful when I'm stretching um, yeah, and definitely. what concerns me is that there's so many things to do right meditation we want to do grounding we want to journal we want to do cold yeah. water therapy literally that <laughs> I could spend seven hours each day doing all the healthy mindset stuff. So then I've yeah. taken the pressure off myself of being like, right, if I can do at the moment, if I can do one of those Every things day. each day yeah, and then um, go from there. And I'm still in the early stages of building those habits of, of that. I think that's really beautiful the way you put that in just one thing a day, because mm. You're right. Like, there's a bit of a backlash at the moment on Instagram for all these like wellness advocates being like, know. my morning routine. The thing, like, I get up, I have my bulletproof coffee, and I go to the sauna. And I know. Like, and it's every like, time I wow. see that, I'm like, they don't have kids. They definitely don't have kids. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a huge. That's a huge thing as well. And that's you have to be more diligent when you have kids. Yeah, like, you do. You have to prioritize yourself more than ever I don't mm. full disclosure I don't I've got two step kids yeah inherited a six and an eight year old who are now 11 and 13 so that was a baptism of fire yeah but, um, yeah. yeah only part-time so I'm still quite lucky at the minute but yeah, yeah. I, I work with a lot of mums like mostly mums to be honest or dads yeah well yeah. we're the ones struggling because like I said there's literally yeah. there's not enough hours in the day to do everything yeah, when you have to give as much of your time to chat other people. Yeah. And when you've got your own business and kids, it's like how long's a piece of string? Like you've yeah. got to learn boundaries and stuff like that because there's there's no end to the work and there's kids, you know, need us, want yeah. us all the time. So it's like That is a juggle. what actually this book said to me the mm -hmm. other day, said to me that I read in the book. Um <laughs> When you, when you die at your funeral, your mm. in basket is still going to be full. Mm. And I was like, "Wow, that's such a good reminder." Because it rather is, yeah. than focusing on kids, and I will, I love my parents' pieces. I don't think my mum's adept enough to listen to a podcast, so I can say this. <laughs> yeah. um, they ran their own business, and they were working till nine pm at night. And yeah. shit, as a kid, yeah. yeah. Like even looking back, um. They did an amazing job, but I don't think they quite realised what they were doing at the time. Yeah. And I think that's made me more mindful mm. to, yeah, what were they? What, were their, um, what was their business in? Um, sailing holidays in the Greek islands. Oh, wow. Yeah. It was, it's, it, it was incredible, like, growing up. Yeah, did you get to London and test a lot Greece. of them? Yeah. Yeah, all the time. Oh, cool. So, it was really cool, but it was also 
and everyone's like oh you're so lucky just and normal though eh like not normal not special also, what people like it felt normal for you i mean special. yeah and i still like going back there today absolutely love it to pieces but yeah so it's what people didn't see and people would always think my parents were going off track a bit but really rich even though they yeah. had like however many boats that are all depreciating assets yeah it's like a disaster of business yeah <laughs> like, no, a business like that but it was an incredible experience but i saw exactly what we've been talking about from them like all this external validation and this is before social media but people would give them amazing feedback and they'd be on a massive high and bookings would be amazing and they'd be on a massive high and then a boat would break and it'd be a massive mm. low and no one ever saw that low and employed like about a hundred staff wow. in Greece as well um, yeah. and that's stressful enough in itself mm. often before the EU regulations came in young Kiwis yeah from overseas so you can imagine exactly like you were talking about like the Heathrow injection <laughs> imagine all these young Kiwis like hopping straight from London on a plane to the Greek islands yeah massive groups of them just it was absolute chaos yeah I had friends that worked on like the super yachts and stuff like that oh yeah oh, yeah. yeah similar to that such incredible experience but, mm. yeah from a parenting standpoint I don't need anyone they because it was when other people got home back in the day before the internet was huge um and I did actually work for them and we set up things like social media which yeah. is novel but um they were answering the phones like answering the telephone until 8 p.m at night mm. and, and that was a big thing started... back then it was same with yeah. um growing up on a farm because there were no cell yeah. phones um like dad had to do all his business calls at night yeah. Um, and that's the beauty of cell phones now is, um, you know, Mark does his during the day. So when he's in at night, he's more present. He doesn't have to deal with these phone calls. Yeah. Mm. Indeed. And yeah, when you're out and about. And I think mm. I think people are getting a bit better at like not expecting people to be on in the evenings. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. I hope things keep moving in that direction. Yeah. And I think you can set those own expectations, can't you? Like when I started the business, yeah, when I started the business, I was getting getting back to people at all hours of the day and night, but I wanted yeah. to, it was new. And I think that's how, um, you know, it gets it going because there's so much passion behind it, so much excitement. You're getting back to people at 10 p.m. on a Saturday night sitting on the couch and then you yeah. grow and evolve and the business evolves and you're like, right, I can't keep doing that forever. And yeah. it's no longer as exciting getting a message because it's part of just part of the day-to-day -day running of your business so um yeah you sort of learn those boundaries sorry I've gone a bit off track there but no no it's all real interesting like <laughs> business and yeah health and mental health it's all so tied in together mm, but it really is yeah yeah it really is and that's yeah boundaries been massive for me this year if you and Sarah mm -hmm. done much on that yes and um yes we have yeah and things like, um, yeah, realizing, um, I think, why you might have to say yes to something, so you can set boundaries a lot easier if you're not seeking this validation. Yeah. 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 A hundred percent. I've had something to probably start I'm struggling routine. with is um, I'm valuing my time at home so much more. So I used to have to have stuff organized every weekend I don't be out and about and it's keeping that mind busy now I love being at home doing cleaning and not much I love um, cleaning and listening to a podcast yes <laughs> favorite favorite thing you. could do yeah. it for hours um <laughs> and um so then when things get busy and I have lots of social engagement and this is so I'm a social person I love socializing absolutely love it yeah but finding it hard like I'm trying to protect my time my time at home and protect my not getting too crazy busy but then having pressures to um do things on weekends that don't really suit um mm -hmm. but then realizing that there's important friendships to maintain and all that yeah. type of thing like it's quite a jigsaw quite a hard one yeah definitely a jigsaw and I think 
I'm the same as you, like I'm super social and it's been a really, I suppose, quite a weird learning curve, same as you, actually learning to really value and actually genuinely enjoying time at home. Mm. And I'm like, yeah. this feels weird. And you, yeah. you do have to say no to a lot more, but you often feel a lot better when you do. You do, yeah. Yeah. And, and then you still that, like got yeah. this side where your friends expect you to um, be a yes person. Yeah. And then, yeah. (laughs) I'm lucky because so many of my close friends are on the other side of the world and all my lovely friends here all have young children. I'll prove it. It works quite well. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. You're that awesome person who can be more flexible. Um, It's nice to have a friend who doesn't have young kids. Yeah. Because... um, kind of like if they have if they have a weekend where the in-laws or their parents might have the kids they can say to you hey what have you got on yeah yeah <laughs> so I am that person might not yeah. be forever but yeah currently that's me yeah. like if people pe- want to go for a walk or a wine yeah and at the moment it's looking at you which is quite so fun. nice to have people like that yeah. um so habits movement is the next thing I run through with people obviously yep. key to you but what mm-hmm. kind of so you've alluded to the fact that you do your base level of fitness that makes you feel good is yep. possibly quite different for a lot higher to other people's and I'm probably similar like when I start working with a lot of people by the time even because I don't have you got dedicate ground zero is it called yes like, so, yeah yeah. yeah so like starting from the very beginning yeah and a lot of the clients I work with it's not a case of um like, can you run a 5K faster? Are you going to sign up for a challenge and do five hit workouts in a week? It's like, actually, at the moment, you're so stressed with work. You're only doing 3,000 steps a day. Mm-hmm. Like, how can we help you spend more time outside, more time in the sunshine? Yeah. And you say you don't, don't, quote, don't have time. Yeah. Like, where have you squeezed in a 10 or 15 minute walk in the morning at mm-hmm. lunchtime, which I feel like, employers should be obligated to make people like get outside so i think so half our lunch break yeah like, it's yeah terrible. yeah yeah so just um, building that kind of movement into people's day i guess yeah i um i think companies should and i haven't actually talked to my team about it for a while but i um have a thing where i pay like half an hour a day to exercise is included in your day so you're basically yeah and I think all um all businesses should do it you know like if you've got an eight hour day half an hour of that is exercise and if you don't use the exercise you can't just go I'm going to use it to go to the bank or whatever it's actually for exercise yeah to get out and go for a walk or to do a workout or something like that Mm. I think all because they're Kiwi businesses but I feel like all businesses need that yeah I'd love to sort of champion a um what would you call it, a big campaign to try and encourage businesses to do it? Can Maybe you? that could be I'll next on the it. list. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to ask, that's your last question, what's next? But yeah. um, that's, that's a really, really cool idea. Yeah, I've and been so, thinking about on and off a year, so I should have a wee brainstorm about how I could make that happen. And kind of, yeah, targeting the corporate world because you can probably exactly. reach a lot more people that way. Yeah, right. and just getting and across to them world. how productive their staff will be oh, the increase in productivity mm. i think it's gymshark um i can't remember where they're based at the moment but they have like a pe session that's compulsory for everyone who works there like every awesome. friday yeah and cool. it's a different thing every time but how cool like team building productivity yeah yeah like, that's awesome so so cool and i think yeah i think a lot of businesses should get into that and when yeah. i say corporate i don't really mean just offices i'm talking like one of the worst businesses. companies, I don't even know we are listening, but some of their employees might have had a few clients with them. Fulton Hogan. Okay, yeah. Absolutely terrible, like the pressure that yeah. they put on people and the lack of breaks. And we were working until 11 p.m. at night. Yeah. And, and the, yeah, the, you know, people like, oh, it's six hours of meetings in a day. Mm-hmm. It's really interesting that I think there's so much scope for companies to change so many lives at the same time mm. if that makes sense yeah 
and they all dip yeah. their toes in they have like little wellness sessions someone yeah. like someone comes in and then they leave and it's like actually yeah, it's a bit token how, yeah bit token and how could you do something more ongoing yeah it's exciting mm. it is <laughs> <laughs> i love um, your exciting stuff keep like you that updated yeah um, well, well, well. <laughs> um so yeah what does your movement look like in a week and... yeah yeah um so there's my ideal and then there's um, like there's yeah and that's not usually because of what I have to film but yeah so Monday Tuesday I film workouts so it's either weights or hit it might be two weights it might be one weights one hit and then I like to do um, a run or a um, I did a basketball um, yeah. so I like to do a run or basketball or a fitness session Wednesday and then Thursday would be, um, so also do Pilates, might be another weight session. Um, yeah. Another, like Friday would be another so like 20 minute workout or a back to back workout. And then yeah. Saturday would be a run or an, just balancing out, depends what other workouts I've done that week, run yeah. or a sprint session or another weights class and then have Sundays off. So I try and do, um, try and work out six, when I say try, I usually work out six days a week, but sometimes yep. I do five if like, for example, we're going away this weekend. So I won't exercise Saturday and Sunday. I don't, um, like if we're away, I don't get up and make myself sure. exercise. I don't put that pressure on. Like I just enjoy being away. Um, yeah. That's really interesting. Have a few drinks and go out for dinner and have fun and yeah. Yeah, that was that was me for years being like still getting up and going for a run on like weekends away or Monday. And I've just flipped that switch probably in about the last year. Yeah. Um and it's so much better. Mm. Um I do find holidays hard in that um Yeah, tell me more. You're used to feeling good, right? And like my holidays with mates. We haven't. I haven't actually had one for ages. Um, we drink like start That's one. I, I was going to ask you about this because yeah. I've heard you like a few wines. <laughs> yeah, well, I've yeah. like my group of friends. We, yeah, we like that's how we all meet each other because we all yeah. like party animals basically in yeah. London or at yeah. uni, um, and that's a lot of people who are that type A personality and play a lot of sport are like that because it's like everything we do, we do to the max. Oh, yes. 100%. So, yeah. Um, and so my group of mates, um, we drink. Like, we go on holiday, so we drink. And you're feeling horrible all week because yeah. you've gone from this extreme of, like, not extreme because I still yeah. have some drinks in the weekends and stuff like that. Um, but, like, we, you're used to feeling pretty good, right? Because we do look after ourselves reasonably well. And then you go on holiday and you just feel – like horrible so you kind of you want to be doing things that make you feel good like exercise and healthy eating but you just don't and that's what is amazing about my trips to Australia gosh that is so fun because we are we're we're there for work so we've still got because the other thing I find hard about holidays is you're sitting around yeah quite a bit like you're doing something you're sitting around to move yeah yeah um, and so, and your brain's really active when we're away for work. So with you've got routine. We're still exercising. We still go out for dinners and we have a few wee cocktails. So it's like the ultimate, like it's what I call a perfect holiday, but it's not it's what, a perfect balance. Yeah, it's a perfect balance. Yeah. But, and, but yeah, unfortunately, I would say unfortunately, but my mates, that's if I tried to pull that one on a holiday. Yeah. Be no, like, that's, it's so funny you said that because yeah. my mates are exactly the same like the mm. ones from uni and back home and we used to have these absolute rages of holidays like the funniest hungover days yeah it's you know so days, fun like, isn't it so broken yes and so actually there's fun. something golden about that because you just say stupid stuff and everything's funny yeah, yeah no one yeah, cares you're too tired I've to actually got this like theory that you actually when you're that broken like you feel that yeah. broken it breaks down all your barriers. Yeah. It's like you don't care what anyone thinks. You don't care about, we're really not advocating getting hung over. I don't want to no. to this. But, but it's like, right. it, 
Yeah, it's completely different and everyone And I find that's way. when I can have a real break because I don't have energy, or mm. I do sometimes now, but because I haven't been being as, as hungover. But when I used to have yeah. massive, massive <laughs> nights, like you, yeah. you can't do anything the next day, so it's like forced break. But and yeah, this is not what I... we're advocating for, guys. No, but it's really interesting. Like you say, like type A personalities or entrepreneurs are up to 40 people. That has been my off switch for mm. so many years. I'm not saying I do it all the time, but no. that is a massive off switch for me. Yeah. Like both during having it sitting down, I find it so much easier to sit down with a drink. Yeah. Than I do. Like I don't really sit down any other time. Mm. Other and I'd say we will podcasts. cover this with our mindset coaches. Um, at yeah. some point <laughs> but in the meantime yeah. yeah it is and I think um, it's because I think what it is it's that's what we if you've got a drink um, it signals that you don't have to that you've done everything so it's mm. almost like a you can switch your brain off a little you can bit. switch your brain off and relax because this is what you're doing now you're in social mode yeah. or whatever yeah but yeah. I don't drink at home by myself either yeah. or really just with my husband um, which took a bit for him to get used to. He'd be like, why don't you have a drink with me? Yeah. And it's like, but the minute someone comes over, I'll have a drink. It's like, yeah. if I'm socialising, I'll drink. But if I'm not, I don't see the point. Yeah, that's <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> well, that's, um, mentioning holiday is really funny because we just, oh, my um, poor Scott, my husband, booked us a honeymoon to Melbourne yeah. with six of our mates and it was oh, awesome it to watch the rugby and I was like cool honeymoon one but um, <laughs> no, it was amazing but I got that like I don't know if you get this now but like full anxiety of like oh my god I'm gonna be broken for like four days mm. and like fun but it's not gonna be and I don't really get bad hangovers which is a terrible thing to admit again not advocating it um but drink silly amounts and still feel fine the next day and have a great time. My so, sister in law's like that. She can just like yeah. charge and charge. Dangerous. <laughs> dangerous. But um so we, we had a bit of a compromise and we booked to go up to Malulawa five days afterwards. Yeah. And I did write about this this in blog articles on my website, but having a healthy holiday, right? So yeah. that was full four day blowout. But actually in Malulaba, it's like your working trip. I yeah. was there with Scott, but like I actually went to the local F forty five and yeah. like met some cool people, met the owners after a beach walk. You know, it was all about Scott, but oh, he wanted to do a couple. Like heaven. Oh, it's so good. He wanted to do mm. like a couple hours work in the morning, so I was like, well, I did the same a couple of days, and then I was like, mm. I'm actually going to go to the gym. And yeah. but then from like ten a.m. onwards, it was like more walking, exploring. Nice. you know bubbles with brunch like it wasn't yeah. a health retreat by any stretch but it was like that, that slightly nice balance. more balanced approach yeah yeah um yeah so I think yeah holiday is an interesting one to get your head around yes and definitely sure. like don't beat yourself up about just doing eating whatever doing whatever because having actual time off yeah and just getting back into it um when you get back but like we're saying also getting that balance because if you're eating reasonably healthy you're going to feel better on the holiday so yeah. that's I think that's the challenge yeah. is getting that and that I right. think that's probably one of my like hacks yeah. apart from um, organic and biodynamic wine with barely any residual sugar so good but, that? Okay. Um, yeah quartz free you tried it no oh really good <laughs> um so as well just non-sugary drinks in general yeah so things like margarita as well and really sugary cocktails yeah um and by doing that and also when friends are eating friends, pizza or chips actually just and I do love pizza and chips on holiday, so don't get me wrong, yeah. I don't say no to them all the time. But generally, if it's a longish period, sticking to pretty good types of food makes yeah. a massive difference. And mm. that's why I feel like okay having that day, because I'm not generally having like a sugar come down. I see. Yeah. As well. Mm. Yeah. 
Um, and exactly. yeah, and then that has that big flow on because when you're really hungover, you don't care about what you eat. You're just like, yeah. just give me anything to make me feel better. And like pizza or whatever yeah. is exactly what you need. Um, it's it's yeah. interesting because the, the sugar or carbohydrates as well as alcohol all has to be processed by the liver. Mm-hmm. So that's why if you eat real yeah. rubbish as well mm-hmm. as drinking a lot, you feel doubly as bad yeah. the next the day. The liver's you in trying to do everything. Yeah. 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 Um, I love Cosmos. So they just make them so perfectly. <laughs> I, you know, they're not as nice other places, but they are so good in Twizel. And um, yeah, so good the show. next day, the yeah, mint folk, it's amazing. The next day, we're going, I'm going out with the girls on Friday night. So yeah, that'll be good. But um, <laughs> they're so sugary. It's so delicious. It really just feels so awful the next day. Yeah. <laughs> But they're so yum. My my tip. Do you like gin and soda? No, I don't like gin. But I um I drank oh. vodka sodas the other night at oh, basketball God. break up. Yeah. What do you do? Gin and soda. Yeah, gin with and soda or vodka soda with a bit of fresh lemon or lime. Mm. Just really nice and not yeah. too much. I, I, there's heaps of water, like yeah. soda water liquid in there, yeah. which helps keep you hydrated and yeah. just no sugar. But we yeah, should probably start talking about Susan. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, right. it's all part and parcel of it. And I think um, what you've said, Kate, is amazing. And I think so many people are like, oh, I had too much wine at the weekend. Or I ate some lollies. And I think you're completely well, right. And what I say well, to a lot of people. Well, they think they've ruined like, it, don't they? They think that's they think all over. They've ruined it and they're like, I've fallen yeah. off the wagon. Mm. And it's like, no, not at all. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> not at all so that's yeah. why the circling back the mindset piece yeah comes right back at you and I think um Paula mentioned it the what changes is the time between when you feel like you've hit a rocky patch or you've done something that perhaps isn't in alignment with in alignment with your goals um and getting back to how you want to be mm. so you could go oh I've fucked it now this week's a write-off, this weekend's a write-off, yeah. like however long you want that to be, or oh, I may as well just wait till New Year, mm. <laughs> you know, it can be a yeah. really long period of time, or however long you deem yeah, in your totally. brain, and actually it can just be the next snack, the next meal. Totally, and it's giving just... yourself the opportunity to learn from it, and going, oh, that's, instead of being hard on yourself, like looking back and reflecting on the um, choices you made, and the actions that you took, and just from a place of learning rather than a place of feeling guilty or feeling negative about yourself. Yeah, definitely. Like going, oh, that was an interesting decision. Yeah, yeah. I wonder why, what made me do that? Yeah. I'm trying to like, yeah, learn from it. And how did it make me feel? Mm. Rather than being like, oh my God, I'm a disaster. I'm a failure. Exactly, yeah. All those silly things we tell ourselves. Mm. So... We could even long in the two hour and a <laughs> well. Um Last but not least, I really want to. Before I get you, I'm going to get you to give everyone a few takeaways at the end. But nutrition. So you've got a nutritionist on the team. Yeah. So Do yeah, we you... work in collaboration with um, Claire Turnbull, who has yes. her own business and then has Mission Nutrition. Yeah. It looks amazing. And do you, I don't know how closely you work with one-on-one clients, but do you and the team, um, what do you find that most people are missing in terms of nutrition when they, if they want to start working with you or Claire? Yeah. Um, again, it's, we're, we're not working one-on-one, but for me, yeah. the big thing is what we're talking about and it's encouraging that balance and um, that you haven't ruined things like that's what so, so many people think that they've actually yeah they've ruined things um yeah so we if people come to us with challenges we send them to clear so we're not act- and we've got all the information on dedicate so I can't actually yeah really answer the question properly but um I do find that people get down on themselves a lot for a night around out food. or yeah around food yeah um and it's yeah. understanding why um to you know, teaching people to understand why they're eating, not what they're eating, necessarily. That is so true. That's mm. really interesting because, yeah, one of the biggest things 
apart from the what is yeah the why and emotional mm. eating yeah. yeah often when I ask questions or like biggest challenges or whatever on Instagram it's like irrational and emotional eating why do I do it mm. they've just it's, answered it's, the question right there because you're emotional yeah you're feeling rational are you stressed you know what's going on in your life and it's exactly like you said like rushing from one thing to another mm. um and trying to fill that void Mm. Of, because you're probably stressed you're feeling emotional you're stressed or you're sad or you're angry mm. and you're trying to get that quick hit of dopamine through mm. food yeah to make yourself feel better yeah and I think yeah. oh sorry the other thing that I find too is um, people not eating enough so they think right I'm going to start eating healthy and mm. they hardly eat a thing and yeah. then they can't maintain it because they're basically starving themselves. So yeah. it's, um, yeah, I've always said to people, when you're changing what you're eating, try not to think too much about portions to begin with because otherwise yeah. you just end up so hungry and you can't maintain it. Yeah. yeah. So and avoid, I think... that, star- avoid starving yourself. And, you know, as you covered before, protein is – is the big one. Oh, something I wanted to ask you about, actually, even though you're supposed to be asking me about things, is um, no, go, go. is protein is challenging in that. Um, I mean, I eat meat sometimes two or three times a day, and you yeah. they people say you know the whole have a meat free day. No way, I don't even really have meat free meals apart from breakfast. Um, it and I music to my ears because I'm exactly the same. Yeah, and I'm not yeah. well. I'm not about to change that because I just think. That's what they ate back in the caveman days. So how yeah. can it be that bad for us? I don't get it's 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 natural. Why is that better than eating something processed? I mean, worse than eating something processed. Like, wouldn't we be better I, off to eat meat? Yeah, I'm gonna ask you a couple of questions in a minute on nutrition. <laughs> Do you see the nutrition guidelines? They're so bad. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm with you, and I think a lot of the studies done on red meat. So, for example, the populations in the U.S. with the highest red meat consumption um, and the red meat causes cancer, those studies didn't account for the quality or the um, sources of the red meat. So a lot of it was hot dogs, burgers. Oh, gosh. Yeah. So How can they educate a whole world on things, the whole world on something that's not done properly? Oh, don't, yeah, don't even get me started. So I was going to ask you because we talked, you know, briefly about, you know, workplaces and what workplaces should be doing and, Mm. you know, should it not be government mandated? Like we don't need nanny state, but like half an hour break at lunchtime to exercise, something like that. But New Zealand's nutrition guidelines are so bad. Like, Is it just New Zealand or is it all of them? And New Zealand's extra worse. Based on as are based on um american and australian yeah which is quite shocking but what's really so as i reckon i they recommend i think it's about 50 grams of protein a day for women um or for teenage girls i think it was and i currently eat maybe like twice as much protein as they recommend for a man yeah like it's, it's and then all the process. I'm not, I'm not overweight, yeah. anyone who can't video, but um, yeah, and all the processed food. So they recommend six to eight servings of whole grains a day. Mm-hmm. So like pasta, bread, crackers. Yeah, which is often what my clients are eating. So they're following yeah. the nutrition guidelines to a T. They're starving. They're like overeating. So- Tell me, like, yeah, is it why are they the guidelines? Is where does the corrupt is it corrupt and where where is it from? You know, what's <gasps> going on? What do you think's going on? Sorry, I'll switch the switch. I'm <laughs> into you now. <laughs> oh, I love that. We should swap. I'll, I'll have to come on yours and you can ask me all these yeah. questions because yeah. I've done a lot of deep dive into it. Um, and a journalist from the Otago Daily Times recently to ask you about it and I was really skeptical to say anything but it's all on the website like it's not hiding Mm. they recommend things like breakfast biscuits like wheat breakfast biscuits 
yeah. and all these whole grains and um what else like there's some really odd stuff in there like they're still recommending low fat yogurt and dairy products and cutting the fat off meat yeah which is bonkers um but the have you ever looked at the corporate members of the new zealand nutrition foundation uh it's really bad so it's kellogg's it'll be kellogg's or sanitarium or kellogg's sanitarium mcdonald's yeah there we go coca-cola chelsea sugar company sunrise Shit, that is so bad isn't it it's really bad and i think new zealand beef and lamb are in there which they probably need to have a word because they're not really um like i think well they won't be a powerhouse we, compared to those others so they'll be doing no. their best yeah with what so they're, they're doing. Quite, yeah well, but sorry yeah, i so need to get my daughter's lunch very soon yep, yeah i'm gonna get it for you in about five minutes okay um yeah so yeah there you go uh, I had something new. What was I gonna say? Um, <laughs> I can't remember. <laughs> but yeah, okay. I've taken important for everyone to know. Your time. But so yeah, good. I've I just think, got my daughter yeah, home should... at the moment. That's all. Otherwise, yeah, I could keep chatting for longer. That another time. Yeah, sounds like um, a plan. Uh, any so takeaway desserts for anyone? What do you recommend if people can make some small tweaks, changes? Do yep. you have a free week? So yes, like free week. I sure do. Yep. And yep. I'm not sure when this is coming out, but in September, if you join our one year membership, you get a free set of resistance bands. So you won't have to pay for postage or for the bands. Um, awesome. And my best takeaway is to focus on creating habits first. And then um, as you've made it part of your life, you can then focus on increasing the intensity and duration. So what most people do is they go super hard out first two weeks. It's too much for their lives. Like it's too much of a shock. They've got so much else yeah. going on. They can't maintain it. They give up. They think that it's um, it's a personal thing that they're not cut out for it. Um, so they're sort of like even more negative about themselves and have even more negative experience about exercise and think that it's not for them and that, that they're useless. So start small. Yeah. It could be 10 minute walks like you're saying, 10 minute, 10, 15 minute walks. We have 10 minute workouts. Um, do stuff you enjoy really cement it as a habit and part of your life and then you can really build on it from there oh that's amazing (laughs) breathe and let's go and let you make your daughter's lunch Kate thank Thank you you. so much for coming on today thank you so much for having me totally enjoyed it thank you thank you for listening to this episode of the lifestyle design secrets podcast if you've enjoyed what you've heard please do stop and take two seconds to subscribe and leave us a review it means the world to us if you are curious about working with us or checking out our new bite-sized guides or our full body reset transformation programs please do head on over to our website which is www.amysfitnessandnutrition.co.nz have a great day